Hey guys, it's been a while, but I think I'm back. Anyway, a lot of things have happened, but I hope I'll have more time to create more contents. But I digress. So today I'll be working on the MG Jetstar that I've started 2000 years ago. As the thumbnail suggests, I will be working on the beam rifle. Honestly, when I first saw the rifle, I thought the design is already pretty dope. Like, I don't think I need to add much to it. But to me, Gunpla is all about making it unique to myself. So I decided to put my own spin on it. I started out by assessing the surface area, you know, in terms of masking difficulty, opportunity for color separation, where I should add in my accent colors. But I can't help but notice the massive seam line running through the top and bottom of the rifle. So I decided to fix that first. I've seen people use plastic cement for this, but personally, I prefer CA glue. And yes, I keep my CA glue in the fridge. You might be asking why. Well, I used to keep it in the drawers like a normal human being, but because of the never ending hot climate over here, the entire bottle dried up despite me rarely using the bottle or opening the bottle. So keeping it in the fridge kept it fresh. The rifle is fairly simple to disassemble. Maybe I should get a part separator like a professional Gunpla YouTuber expert instead of using my nails like a caveman. I then filled in the gaps with some CA glue and I tend to go a bit heavy handed as I can just sand the excess away later. I then steal a few of these from my wife and clamp the parts together. A cool thing about CA glue is that they harden almost immediately if you apply some activator. Once it is rock solid, I sand away the excess glue with my trusty sanding sponge taped to a drill bit. I started noticing some dust flying around and I remember a wise man used to say, Don't breathe this! So I whip out my nail dust vacuum as I don't want to inhale all this dust and gain some unexpected superpowers. By the way, I do have the product link in the description, but before you decide to buy the dust vacuum, I should tell you this, it gets pretty loud. I often use this only when I have earbuds on. So if you can deal with the noise, then check out the links in the description below. Seems pretty good so far. I wanted to be sure that the seam lines are fixed before I start customizing the rifle. So I decided to prime the rifle first. I'm still using the AT primer that Alex sponsored me previously, and I do think that it works pretty well and it's easy to use. Looks like it's sealed up pretty well, but there's still some minor visible flaws on some areas. For these, I'll be using finishers lacquer paste. These are much more forgiving to use and they're much easier to sand away. You get to decide the viscosity of the paste based on how much thinner you add in. I do have a video talking about how to fix scribing mistakes with these products. I'll leave a link at the end of this video so you can check it out later. If you are familiar with this kit or this beam rifle, you would probably notice that I have the sight or the scope backwards. I understand that the way it's installed based on the manual isn't wrong, but aesthetically, I think it looks more balanced this way. But as you can see here, there's a noticeable gap. So I decided to trim this area to make it look less awkward. Well, slightly I guess. After fixing the seam line, I think this area is a bit too empty and flat. So I started planning what I should add in in this area. I initially wanted to add an iron sight on this area, but after asking around, I concluded that futuristic giant mobile suits wouldn't use a weapon like this as they rely on cameras or sensors on the weapon itself. So I think it looks a bit weird for a mobile suit to lean on the weapon and look through the iron sight, you know, like humans. So instead of adding the iron sight on this area, I went with a design that resembles a mechanism to open up the rifle on this surface. Sort of like a maintenance hatch, where engineers can enter the rifle and fix stuff. I start out by roughly marking the areas where I want the design to start and stop, so it won't be covered up by the scope. I usually start out by using the thinnest scriber and carved out simple lines along the shape of the surface. From there, I added more separations to the design, and I think it's important to not have the design overpower the overall look of the rifle. Maintaining balance and having sufficient white space is important. Personally, I think learning how to hold back from adding too much is a skill by itself, and it's something that I really want to work on and improve on. Since the design is still a bit flat on the surface, I decided to add an extra layer here. 
something that will make the design look a bit more interesting. I added a protruding access hatch door here to spice things up and also it kind of made sense too in terms of mechanical design. To contrast the protruding access hatch, I added a trench here with a 0.5mm chisel to make it more dynamic and tie the design together. I noticed that I have over sanded this area while removing the seam line. To rectify this, I'm just gonna flatten the slope and pretend that it's done intentionally. Just slowly going at it with a wide chisel and gradually go wider to flatten the entire surface. On the sides of the rifle, I wanted to add something subtle but noticeable to make things interesting on this area. I decided to go with a simple light switch notch on both sides. I do have a tutorial video for this specific design, so check it out if you're interested. I think that's gonna be it in terms of adding customizations onto the rifle. Time to give the rifle a nice bubble bath. There were some debates in terms of adding soap or not when washing Gunpla parts. I often figured, why not? I'm already washing the parts in an ultrasonic cleaner. So adding a few drops will not harm the parts anyway. And I do have sweaty hands, so the soap might help a bit I think. What about you guys? Do you guys use soap or not? After that, I reprimed the rifle and started planning out the colors of the rifle. I don't want to just paint the entire thing grey as I think it's a bit too plain looking, but at the same time, I don't want it to be too colorful looking like a nerf gun. I think it's important to plan your colors on areas that's not visible on the line art. But remember to ask your cat for its opinion and why the design is terrible. So I actually planned the color scheme to include the main purple colors on some areas, which I thought look awesome on screen, but it's unfortunately looking a bit too much like a nerf gun to my liking. So I changed away the purples and repainted the access hatch on the top of the rifle into a slightly darker gray so it doesn't stand out too much. Once I'm done with the base colors, I gloss coated the rifle to make it easier for panel line cleaning and decals application. I then painted all panel lines and lower areas on the surface with enamel dark grey paint that I mixed myself. And with a lot of lighter fluid on hand, I clean and clean and clean before I face my worst enemy again, hand painting. Seriously, I don't know what it is, but I've always struggled with hand painting. Maybe it's the low quality brush, maybe it's the paint, perhaps it's just me. If you guys know any good tips on how to improve hand painting in general, leave it down in the comments. But thankfully, reverse washing with enamel paint is quite forgiving. I can just clean up my mistakes with some lighter fluid, a lot of it in my case. Time to put everything together for decals. I'm not sure if this is usually the case for you guys, but generally, I don't follow the manual when it comes to decal placement. Like for instance, according to the manual, there's only one decal applied on the rifle. I understand that I shouldn't apply too many, but I think it can do better with more decals. What about you guys? Do you guys strictly follow the manual? I think it's actually quite easy to go overboard with decals. I've seen people who felt the need to fill every empty space with decals. While that could be appealing to some, but personally, I think it's a bit too much. The way I do it is to try and figure out spots that warrants a decal. If you look at our day-to-day -day appliances, the warning signs or descriptions are on the relevant areas. They're not going to randomly plaster warning signs on irrelevant areas, right? Once I'm done with the decals, it's time for the final matte top coat. I notice a few spots that would look nice with some metal detail parts. Here's a good tip if you kept losing these tiny parts. It's to stick them on some masking tape. Another good tip if you're having difficulty sticking on tiny parts that doesn't have a lot of surface area for you to apply sufficient glue, then this method could be useful. Basically, I stick the metal part on the sticky side of the double-sided tape and let it sit for a while. It should pick up enough adhesive from the tape itself and would stick on to the surface without any problems. The proper next step would be to seal this off with a top coat, but I want the rifle to be in matte while keeping the metal sheen on these metal parts, so I left it as is. And when I thought I'm finally done, I noticed this area where I forgot to fix previously. I cut out a piece of plow plate slightly smaller than the surface as an opportunity to add in more details. I then chamfered the edges to make it blend in better. 
I decided to cut out a section in the middle so that I can add another accent color. I roughly marked the spot where the cutout would be and painted the area green. I then painted the plot plate in a slightly darker tone to add more separations. Once the plot plate is attached, I added a decal here just to make it look more natural. And there you have it. Honestly, I think the video is a bit too long, but generally I wanted to showcase what I actually went through in the process of customizing the rifle, and also my thought process and ideas around the design. Well, I hope it's been an interesting watch, and if it's in any way helpful, then that's awesome. Please let me know what you think of this video format, and I hope you will stick around for my next video. Bye!